Hey folks, it's Aaron from Got A Minute, and here's some math that's pretty encouraging. And before I start, you know, I just want to thank you for taking the time to watch these videos. And um, sometimes I just don't know how fast to go through videos, and sometimes I'm so concerned about saying things fast, and sometimes I don't get my points across. I'm just very aware of my time, and uh, I want it to be quick and to the point. Sometimes I'm too quick and too fast, and sometimes people don't get it. So... I'm just going to talk right now as if you're in my living room right now, just hanging out with me on the couch. I'm going to try and explain myself thoroughly. Still do it in, a, in an efficient amount of time here, but um, but uh, not go too fast so that you don't understand. All right. So I've got some math here that I think is super encouraging, super, well, clear as mud in a way. <laughs> I mean, it's a, I think it's pretty neat. So let's just talk here. All right. So I did a video the other day about Matthew 18. And how Jesus said you, you're to forgive 70 times 7. And that's in Matthew 18, verse 22. Let me show you. Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to 7 times, but up to 70 times 7. So 70 times 7 is 490. So that's a significant number, 490. And, and 7 is a significant number as well. Let's go to Daniel as well, Daniel 9.24. This is the big, big, big prophecy, and it's the 70-week prophecy. So 70, once again, is a big number. Again, Matthew 18, verse 22 is 70. So there it is, 70 times 7, big deal, and 70 weeks. But then what is he, what's going on in the 70 weeks? It's, well, we know that a week is 7 days. So this is also another version of 70 times Seven. Therefore, you can derive 490 from this prophecy as well. So 490 is a very significant number. We can go to the, the Jubilee count, and we know that Jubilee, um, it's, you know, it's every seven Sabbaths. Where is it? Uh, it's, it's not too important to, to, oh, here it is, Leviticus 25. It's the seven-year count. Every seven years, you know, seven Sabbaths is 49, and then... And there you go. And then it's on the it's talking about the Jubilee in the 50th year. But the point here, the bigger point is Daniel 9, 24 is talking about 70 weeks. Okay, 70 weeks, and we know that there are seven days in a week. And we're we're waiting for the final week. We're waiting for the 70th week uh, of Daniel. Okay, so there's there's where I get my 490s, because before I get going here, like, what do you, why is 490 so significant? We've got many witnesses of 70 and 7 being very uh, significant to God. Leviticus 26 is another place. I should show you that real quick. And he's, he mentions uh, basically sin uh, and Sabbaths um, and Leviticus 26. So we got... And after all this, if you do not obey me, then I will punish you seven times. And he says this four times in Leviticus 26, as if seven is a form of, just as, that's his punishment number, it seems, you know. And not only that, he mentions the Sabbath in this chapter many, many times, okay? So the Sabbath is a Sabbath rest. We've got some Sabbath talk over here. Uh, six days you shall work, and the seventh year, no, you don't work, and you don't harvest your grapes, which is another thing that actually points to... Uh, the season we're in right now, but we're not talking so much about an actual day here. We're talking about the overall seven-year plan. So I hope I covered enough verses just to give you some perspective on why why we're doing this 490 thing, okay? So again, you're my friend in the living room here, and I'm just trying to explain myself, and i got to just kind of build up on this, and I can't just rush through this. You're going to be kind of scratching your head. So 70 times 7, Jesus said it, and it's also a Daniel 9 thing. So Matthew 18 and Daniel 9, 70 times 7. 490. Okay, so that's a big deal. Uh, Jubilee's like a 49-day thing. Big deal. All right, so now let's talk about this whole 7,000-year creation plan. We know that after the second coming, we, there has to be a millennial reign, and it's got to be a 1,000 years. It just has to be a 1,000 years, and we've got a 7,000-day uh, creation plan. Every day is like a 1,000 years. Uh, okay, many of you, know, you guys know the, that verse in uh, 2 Peter chapter 3. Days like a thousand years. Okay, now let's talk about the numbers on the chart. Um, of course, we're speculating. We're uh, hypothesizing 
But what I'm seeing here in the math makes perfect sense. I could be wrong, but 2030 just fits like a glove. It fits so good. All right, here we go. This is not too significant, but I wanted to say this. I feel that uh, Jesus, first of all, I, I believe he likely died in 30 AD. In order to have him die in 30 AD, he would have been have he would have had to been born in 5 BC in the fall to be 33 and a half on the cross because that is that year zero. Everybody gets all confused about that year zero because you can't count it. Okay. So that's why people get all messed up about this whole calculation thing. But I believe he was born in the fall of 5 BC to put him on the cross in 30 AD. Okay. So that means I think that very likely uh, Adam was born on 4005 BC. And I think there was a perfect 4,000 years from the birth of Adam to the birth of Jesus. A perfect 4,000 years. I also think that Adam and Jesus both live a sinless life for the exact amount of time, 33 and a half years. And that uh, he sinned in 3971 BC by eating the fruit on the tree. And that, from the sin to the cross, he sinned and then Jesus redeemed. So the first Adam, we, we're all going, basically we're all um, condemned. We're all not on the pathway to heaven uh, by the first Adam, but the second Adam uh, redeems us, which is Jesus Christ. Okay, so the only way to the Father is through Jesus Christ alone. Now I think that from the sin to the cross was exactly 4,000 years. Okay, so we got a perfect 4,000 years from birth to birth, and we got a perfect 4,000 years from sin to cross. You with me so far? I hope you're, you're tracking with me. Okay, so the math there is just perfect in and of itself, if, if in fact this is true. Okay, now let's go talk about this category first, okay? 70 AD, the destru destruction of the temple. It's a pretty... Uh, Everybody doesn't argue about this. This is pretty much there. And this particular date is so uh, critical uh, to everything because Jesus talks about this temple being destroyed. He, it, that's a big deal. And it's in Daniel 9, uh, 26, when the second, there's two characters in Daniel 9, 26. Uh, the, the second prince was who destroyed the temple in 70 AD. The first was Jesus dying in 30 AD. The same verse is talking about 30 AD and 70 AD, in my opinion. Okay, so this is all part of prophecy. And so here we are talking about it right now. Um, okay, so all these red dots here are cycles of 490. 490 years from this dot to there, another 490 cycle, another 490 year cycle, another 490 seat year cycle, another 490. There's 12 490 year cycles within the 6,000th uh, year calendar. But we have some other wiggle room we have to deal with. So we're going to talk about that. So from 70 AD, which is a very, very important day, I think that's almost like our hinge point of this whole thing as well. From 70 AD to 2030, there is four cycles of 490. There is four cycles of 70 times 7, what Jesus said in Matthew 18 and in Daniel chapter 9, verse 24. There's four cycles of four times 490, four cycles of this 490 cycle, and that's 1,960 1, years. But we have a 40-year discrepancy to get a perfect 2,000 years. Well, 40 times 50 is 2,000. So if you think of the Jubilee as in terms of 49, you're going to get to nine, 1960. If you're thinking about a Jubilee in terms of 50, you're going to get a perfect 2,000 years from 30 AD to 2030. So here's the thing. If Jesus died on the cross in 31 AD, then this 40, this is, there's no, it's not clean anymore. The math isn't clean anymore. If he died in 32, now this is a 38. And, now, and then again, the math isn't clean anymore. If he died in 33, then the math is 37. And again, it, the math isn't as clean as it is for this particular year. It's really good. Here's another 
awesome thing with while we're in this window over here. 1540 is the last cycle of 490 uh, year cycle. The 70 times seven. And we're waiting for Daniel's 70th week. The last of the last. We're just we're just looking at the, the seven year. Now there's a lot to be said here, but I don't want this video to go too long into other categories. But um, there was somebody called Suleiman, Suleiman the Magnificent. And um, this might be another study in and of itself. Uh, but the Eastern Gate was sealed shut in in and around 1540 by order of Suleiman the Magnificent. And he was a sultan of Ottoman Empire. And I'm just going to read this little blurb. It is believed that um, the reason for closing the Eastern Gate was to prevent the Jewish Messiah from gaining entrance to Jerusalem. Jewish tradition states that the Messiah will pass through the Eastern Gate when he comes to rule. The Muslim Suleiman was attempting to thwart the Messiah's plans with 16 feet of cement. So there's uh, some verses in Ezekiel too that seem to indicate that this is a prophecy, um, but isn't that interesting that he closed the Eastern Gate with cement? And there's many verses in Ezekiel. I think that Ezekiel 44, one through two would be the best example of it where it seems to indicate that this was a prophecy fulfilled in 1540. So there's some there's a lot of subject matter that we can tackle on that. I think there is a lot to say and study there. But nevertheless, that was exactly 490 years from 2030. Could have been also been 1541, but you know, close, close, very, very close within that window. So there's your perfect, there's your just perfect math over there. It's just perfect. Let's go over to the back end, the beginning end. And I also expected something in the middle, but again, I didn't want to talk too much and get you all confused uh, about all that. But I, I, I expect, basically, you see this 120 here, you see a 40 here. I expected an 80 thing here, and I'm sure I can present that, but I just, again, I just wanted to skip that. Okay, so this, this date right here, so remember I said 70 AD is four cycles from 2030. Well, this date right here, is 12 490 uh, day cycle, year cycles. It's 12 cycles of 490. It's 12 cycles, and that is 5,880 years. Again, you get rid of the zero. Don't get confused with the zero. But that will bring you exactly to 2030 from that date. Now, that in and of itself, okay, whatever. No big deal. But see over here, we had, we had, we had a 40-year difference. Well, over here, we have a 120-year difference from my suspected date of when Adam sinned. Okay, so now this is really, really interesting because this math right here perfectly lines up with this math right here. Again, if you're counting with, with the Jubilee cycles being 50, well, 120 times 50 Jubilee cycles from the sin is exactly 6,000 years. Again, forget about the zero, can't count that. So we've got 120 times 50 is 6,000 years. So from the fall of Adam to 2030 is exactly 6,000 years. And it's just shy of 120 years of, of the cycles of the 400, 490 cycle. Isn't that something? So I hope this chart makes sense to you. Uh, again, this is a whole 7,000 year plan. And we have to, by his commandment, have a thousand year rest. It's a Sabbath that he has put in place. And it seems to be this seems so clean to me i of course we could be wrong of course we could be of course he could have died there in 31 or 32 or 33 or 34 but all this math no longer just doesn't make sense as like it does right now there are so many things and uh there are so many videos pointing to 2030 and so much content um I, I brought something up about the Samson's riddle and, and how it just seems to point to 2030, and that's just one drop in the bucket. But the math here, I think, makes perfect sense the way we see it. So again, 70 times 7, Matthew 18, verse 22. And also, not only that, in Matthew 18, where two or three are gathered, well, there's your two, there's your three. But anyway, um, and it's talking about 
not only 70 times 7, but it's talking about sin in general. And Leviticus 26 is talking about sin in general. And it's talking about Sabbath, which happens after our suspected second coming of 2030. And this prophecy is talking about the Messiah coming back. And so the last, basically 490 years before the second coming, <laughs> he, he cemented a gate. The, the theory is he cemented a gate to stop the Messiah from coming. And man, you can't stop the Messiah from coming. He's going to come whether you like it or not, man. So um, I hope this video wasn't too long or too short or whatever. I hope you guys understand it. I, I think I've explained myself. Uh, the next thing I'd, I'd probably eventually like to do is show you I, I guarantee you uh, 8 times 490 is going to equal something and it's going to end up equaling 2030 and then the difference of the days is going to be uh, 80 years and it's all going to make sense. 80 times uh, 50 is, you know, it's probably going to get you, it's going to get you 4,000, right? But yeah, but where they line up with feast days and um, historical events, you know, we will have to dig into that further. But I think, um, long story short, the math is such... Uh, a good fit for us to be going this year, 2030 minus seven years and bada bing, bada boom. Okay. So again, I don't know for sure, but this is the uh, the best interpretation I can come up with, with what we're seeing right now. Okay. Um, hang on one day closer. Go Jesus, go see in the clouds. Adios muchachos. Love you. Hallelujah. I'll see you.